They call themselves Voices Of, a gaggle of independent candidates who are set to play a significant role in the coming campaign. They say they're not a political party, but these independent voices all sing from the same hymn book. Climate action, political integrity, gender equality. The campaign colours are similar and the media lines too. And they all have another thing that binds them together. A common enemy, incumbent Liberal MPs. What do you think the impact of the voices will be in this campaign? They're basically labour in disguise, that's what they are. The practical impact of this is to help the Labor Party. It's to hurt the Liberal Party to help the Labor Party. So be under no illusions, this is a false flag operation. If I had to lose, so be it. I'd rather be a loser than a quitter. When Tony Abbott lost his seat at the last election, it was to an independent. I'm Zali Stegall and I'm ready to champion climate strategy. The former Olympic skier, Zali Stegall. Warringah, what are we waiting for? Do you think voters are smart enough to work out who the voices are and who the voices aren't? Voices of, at the moment, are pretending to be independent and the challenge for the Liberal Party, the Liberal National Party, is to highlight the, the left-wing aspect of these Voices of candidates, the fact that they're going to preference the Conservative Party's last, mm -hmm. the fact that they will support a Labor government. Ghazali Stegall is someone who votes with Labor and the Greens all the time uh, here in Parliament House. She's someone who will support an Anthony Albanese government. Fact. It's expected there will be a record number of independents running in the federal election. Get some real action on climate. Mm. True independents, as well as those from the Voices mob, like Despy O'Connor. And how are you feeling about the coming election? Here in the electorate of Flinders, southeast of Melbourne, Hello. I'm Zoe. candidate Zoe McKenzie no one will be able to fish off the pier. is trying to keep the seat in Liberal hands. I'm sorry. Afraid, afraid. Following Health Minister Greg Hunt's retirement after 21 years in the parliament. Hey, nice Good luck, yeah. Thanks very much. Okay. Independence will, yeah, shake things up a little. By definition, if you're an independent, you don't belong to a group, right? This is a group that basically signs up people that all look pretty much the same. Hi, I'm Sophie Scomps. I am Despy O'Connor. Hi, I'm George Stewart. I'm a lawyer. I'm very concerned citizen. These are the voices of candidates. Ryan. And I'm your independent candidate for Kuyong. Independence, they say, I've had enough. I can't stand But they share a lot in common. Take a close look at the messaging. I'm for real action on climate change. I'm for honesty in politics. And they're all targeting the same thing. If you give me your vote together... High profile, coalition held seats and nowhere else. I'm Zoe Daniel and I'm your community-backed independent candidate for Goldstein. Why these Climate 200 guerrilla games matter is not just that Liberal seats could fall, but that Liberal campaign hardheads will waste time and money trying to hang on to electorates that, by right, shouldn't be at risk. And for the Liberal MPs in them, like the Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, every moment he's at home trying to shore up Kuyong, his time is not in a marginal seat that they've got to win. You're a political strategist. Give me a sense of how you read this Voices crowd. Well, first of all, I'd just simply say to people, beware of fake independence. They are well resourced. We've seen that. Where's the money coming from? That's what the public need to truly have a look at. And often it's coming from green groups or left-leaning groups that would otherwise be supporting the Labor Party or the Greens. And they're simply there as fake independents to prop up the vote of Labor and the Greens. That is the biggest worry that we've got in these future elections. They say they're not a political party, but close to 20 of the Voices Of candidates have another thing in common. 
campaigning millions. Let's change the climate in Canberra. If Simon Holmes Accord raises $20 million plus and puts that money into targeted local campaigns in Liberal Party seats, then that has the potential to swing the election. Today at the National Press Club, investor and philanthropist Simon Holmes Accord. Simon Holmes Accord is the son of Australia's first billionaire, the legendary corporate raider Robert Holmes Accord. Now, Simon has his sights set on power games in Canberra. Australian politics is broken. That's the problem. That's why we're here today. Hacking at the branches hasn't been working. We have to strike at the root. And I say that striking at the root means getting people into parliament who are strong, independent and ready to hold government accountable. If we elect just three more climate ambitious independents... In 2019, just days before the last federal election was called, Simon Holmes Accord set up Climate 200. This election, we have an opportunity to fundamentally change our government's response to the climate crisis. This seesaw diagram from Holmes Accord gives the game away. The voices are Labor's insurance policy in the event of a hung parliament, despite the spin from their money man. Together, we can do this. These candidates are not working in cahoots. Uh, these candidates speak for themselves. They are truly independent. We have no influence in what they will do in the next, uh, you know, immediately following election, uh, nor do we seek to. Despite demanding integrity in politics, millions of dollars has been used to fund these voices candidates coming from Climate 200. And there have been questions about disclosures. There's a lot of noise at the moment around electoral donation disclosure. Climate 200 goes above and beyond the legal disclosure requirements, encouraging all our donors, large and small, to disclose their names on our website. These are uh, individuals using very complex uh, financial structures with no accountability back to a grassroots political organisation like political parties, and they need to be called out for that. The Australian Electoral Commission shows that Climate 200 donated nearly $450,000 to 12 independent candidates at the last election. This election, that war chest could be as high as $20 million. It's interesting that the Climate 200 uh, candidates, uh, what Labor seat are they running in? They're not. Um, mm. What seat are they running in that Labor hopes to pick up at the election? They're not. Uh, they are purely running against uh, conservative seats to do the bidding by uh, and for the Labor Party. Up until August last year, Climate 200 shared a registered address with a business called Popularis Agency. It's a campaigning company set up by three men with strong ties to the Labor Party and the activist group GetUp. We can reveal that six Climate 200 donors have given a combined $330,000 to get up over the past seven years. What do you fight for? We know it's been revealed that there is quite a relationship between get up former staff, ALP, former staff and a campaign house supporting a number of these voices independents. That lends weight to the argument that they're just a campaigning vehicle for the left side of politics. Oh, there's no doubt, Peter. What's happened is that the orange shirts have been taken off and the teal ones have been put on. Uh, get up uh, is a nasty word now. They've been caught out. Uh, the transparency applied to them has shown uh, that they are not really a grassroots organisation. They never were. It's get up under a different banner and a different name. Which brings us to Zali Stegel. Popularas also share the same business address as Alvira Advisors. It's run by Damien Hodgkinson, a director and sole shareholder of Climate 200. He was Stegall's financial controller at the last election. 
the man behind her $100,000 donation in breach of the laws around disclosures. It was disgraceful, it was tricky, it was understood at the time, I'm sure of that. Um, it was no accident. Now Climate 200 is financing around 20 independent candidates, people like Zoe Daniel. And it's no coincidence that they're almost all women. It's part of a deliberate ploy to highlight the Liberal Party's so-called problem with women. Yeah, if you vote uh, for these teal independents, they're not telling you if they're going to support the continuation of the Morrison government or if they're going to back uh, a Labor and Greens Alliance government. And so I don't know why smart people would completely outsource their choice on who they want to see be the government after the election to someone who isn't telling them beforehand on what they'll do if they have the balance of power. Those in Labor concerned that Albanese doesn't have what it takes to win a majority know that if the result is a hung parliament, the so-called independence could end up in the driver's seat. Well, in general terms, this is a hung parliament. Preferences have been distributed, everybody's been elected, and it comes out that the major parties have pulled exactly the same amount of seats. So what are we going to do about that? Well, they can't govern. They can't govern until they've got a majority. So we know the Greens here on two seats, they will naturally, they will go with the Labor Party. So Labor Party's now got a two-seat majority until One Nation says, no, we're going to back the coalition. We know historically that the Labor Party is better at negotiating with minor parties and independents. So, this little pink guy has promised all sorts of things by the coalition, but promised a lot more from the ALP. So now, this guy is arguably the most important, most powerful person in the country. If just like, three more pro-climate independents are elected, they would be able to hold the party machines accountable. How concerned should the Liberal Party, LNP, be about voices? We should be very concerned about voices of and get up because they are part of this, this avalanche of left-wing people who are against us at this coming election. I'm talking just not the Labor Party and the Greens, the unions, you know, ABC, SBS, Fairfax, and now we've got these people. And they're all working together, clearly working together, to make sure that, that we lose the coming election. Because we've got to remember, the left feel robbed over Scott Morrison winning the election in 2019. And you only have to speak to journalists in this building, here in Parliament House, who have this sense of grievance, this sense of loss, that, that, that Scott Morrison won against their preferred candidate. So I don't want to use the word conspiracy, but I'm going to say it is certainly an organised cabal of, of, of people who are doing their best to stop Liberals and Nationals from winning the coming election. Mm -hmm.